Luca Nation, we're recording this right in the first half of the Grizzlies Warriors game. And and I, I think this is gonna be one of the kind of the games of the year. Games of the year. I want to I want to ask you, Cage, right now, NBA season. Who are your two finals predictions? Who's coming out the East? Who's coming out the West? Nets, Warriors. Nets. Still? Yeah, Nets, Warriors. Yep. They'll figure uh, it out. They'll figure out a way to, you know, to Durant's always going to score. You just got to get one of the other two guys to, to be healthy and play and play well, and they'll be fine. Um. I don't know whether or not they can beat the Warriors, but that's why I think it goes to the finals. So, um, guys, um, just real quick, uh, we, we did our awards. We did our all, all, that, all that stuff. We tallied up the awards. So if you haven't seen them, go to Luca Tiger LeBron podcast. Uh, leave us a comment. Congratulations to all the winners. But, but the true, like, like the, really the value in that was the conversations that came from it. And I think what I'm going to do is this week, I know there's a lot of messages I'm catching up on. Uh, a lot of emails I'm going to still answer, but, but maybe we'll start bringing on some of the guests, you know, some of the some of the winners and some of the people we had uh, on the list and just starting to kind of have conversations. You know, what do they think the hobby is going to look like in 2022? You know, what are some shows that they're excited for that are coming up uh, and start to have a little bit more guest episodes? How's that sound to you, Cage? Sounds good. And I mean, listen, open it up, expand it a little bit. Part of the fun about doing this where, you know, the, the response that we got from so many people in the community who follow us, who said, well, what about this person? What about this person? What about this breaker? What about, you know, what about this person who we may not know, who may not be somebody who we've run into in our, you know, year and a half on our hobby journey with this podcast. So we love that. And if you think there's somebody out there who should be on the show, Message us. Let us know. You know what I mean? We'd be happy to put some of these other folks on. We'd like to meet them also, you know? I got a question for you. Shoot. Anybody, anybody from your childhood, anybody, who would you want to have a guest on the show? Oh, my As goodness. Huh? So you did not – you didn't good, do a good job of framing the framing the question, right? Miss, I, I would say Miss Markowitz, who was my fourth grade um, elementary school teacher, but I think she's dead. So, but if she was alive, that's who I'd have on because she, she knew that this was going to happen. She knew I'd be a storyteller and she knew I'd be making people laugh. I'd like her to see that this is what I turned into a successful podcaster. So, so we found it. I have it. It's in my basement. You know, like my parents saved all my shit from school and I still have, this is one of like the few things I saved. I had to do a diary, right? You know, like as a, as a fourth grade kid, you have to write this whole like, you know, diary, blah, blah, blah. A note um, to your future self, right? No, just like, hey, what are you doing today? What are you doing today? Like creative. You're trying to be creative. Like, it, you know, like some kid was right today. I'd like to go on a hot air balloon ride, blah, blah, blah. Well, I wrote the whole journal was me as a hero trying to take down the villain, the dastardly Mrs. M, who was my teacher. So this poor woman every day had to read and grade my journal where I was, it was like Captain Underpants. I wrote a whole journal where she was the villain. <laughs> she was the evil person. But she was your biggest fan and she was your biggest oh, believer. She's a huge fan. And she gave me great grades on it too. Yeah, put me in all like honors classes and stuff going forward and like told my parents how creative I was and all that crap. But I look back and I'm like, wow, what a dick I was. Like the, the assignment was like, you know, have fun, be creative. And I turned it into like this, like, you know, Disney movie where she was like the villain. <laughs> you know, she, she do, you ever, like, do you ever go down to the basement get that diary oh. and read it to the kids oh they've seen it 100 percent. they think it's the funniest thing in the world they think it's so funny like you were miss an idiot. moskowitz and she markowitz. said that you were good yeah. markowitz You're, she said you're a good storyteller yeah and a comedian oh yeah exactly so we bring her on she can see i tell stories and i make people laugh so there you go dude the, the hippo story was all time i actually use that today for my uncle egot Nice. One of my favorite uncles of all time. <laughs> I said, you know, we're Goldbergs. We're, we're loud. We have, we're opinionated. You know, That's right. I, be, well, I, what I said was because he was very calm today. Because you and messed the story up. You did. You know, you did. Well, he was very calm and composed. And I was like, you know, I love this Uncle Ike. I love when you're cracking jokes and just loving life and enjoying yourself. And then I told him the story of the hippo, you know? Oh, like, little bit. <laughs> I, I I don't tell stories as well as you. Right. I think I'm, I think I have a knack for interviewing and uh, asking yes. questions. And moderating. 
moderate. I, I, I enjoy that. I enjoy that. Larry King was one of my heroes growing up. A moderate. You are the a moderate. Played, uh, the guy who ran TRL. Is that Jimmy Kimmel? No, Jimmy Fallon? Who was Total Request ran? Live? Yeah. That, that was like that was a big show when I was growing up. Seventh, eighth grade. That was like you would come home from school. I would watch TRL. I saw Justin Timberlake, uh, Cry Me a River. Then it was um, 50 Cent in the club. Those were like the two songs of my generation. And then we'd go outside. We'd play Capture the Flag or football in the backyard or soccer or basketball every single day. Who ran Total Request? Who was that? Carson I Daly. I Carson didn't even look Daly, that up. I'm yeah, going Carson to look Daly. it up. Carson Daly. Exactly. You guys I, I pegged you more of like an Eric Nice, the grind kind of guy, you know? I feel like if I knew what that was, I would be like an <laughs> insulting compliment. No, 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 not at all. No, it's, it's just another MTV show. Okay, guys, turn your head again. Look that way again. Andrew, oh, wow. paid, some, he, Andrew paid someone for this today. Look at that. What is going on back there? How come he didn't do a good job back here? What I like it on the profile. Yeah, profiles, but you turn like that, and it's like, okay, well, tell me this guy's address, and we will go kick his ass. It was at the mall. Oh, don't, well. ju- don't judge me today, guys. Let me shower. <laughs> Let me do the, do That's the probably damn thing. It's got to yeah, it's got to get some product in it and stuff. You know? It's okay. I don't use product cage. I should. Only Is berries hair- and juices. Well, I feel like over twenty years of using product, like your hair is just perfectly moldable. There is no chemicals. Only juices and berries. No. Yeah. Shit, Dan. I'm gonna I'm, I'm How you want me to cut this? My head. That's coming to America. That's coming to America. Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy. When he's in the bar. He's, he's very. He's a loud comedian. He's I'd just make it nice in your neat. face. That'd be eight dollars. No, that one there. Yeah, he's a good comedian. I, I was a good one. Shoot. I want to talk about the World Cup, and my play is actually from a player who's going to be in the World Cup. But, but fun fact, actually, didn't know this up until today. The World Cup is not in the summer, Cage. It's going to be in the winter because it's in Dubai. Yeah, if it was in the summer, whoever you play is going to die. So it's good that it's in the winter. Well, actually, actually. So I was it's talking, summer and winter. I was talking to Manny about this today. Winter and the summer. Hey, you're confusing me. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. What's the temperature oh. like in the winter in Qatar? In, it's probably warm, but it's not as hot as it is in the summer. But here's the kicker. European clubs don't ah, do well. Ah, ah, the kicker. As he talks about World Cup, <laughs> this guy. Uh, European teams struggle in Asian soil, on Latin American soil, because you got to understand, European teams, like in England, let's say you play there year-round, it's rainy, it, it's it's moderate climate. You're not going to get that humidity, that heat that you would face in Latin America or uh, Asia or Qatar in this instance. So I actually think European teams like France, Belgium, England, you know, the favorites, are going to struggle in Qatar. But who I think is going to have a lot of success are the Latin American teams, right? They're used to that climate. They're used to playing in a lot in really, really, really hot weather. And that's a subtle difference. And I know it's in November. I'll look up the weather in November, but it's still Qatar. It's still hot. Um, and I think the Latin American teams are going to have a lot of success. Second point. So one. So the edge goes to Latin American teams. Second point. Messi went to PSG, right? And, you know, some people said he fell off. He doesn't play as much. You know, he's been, been, he's been coming off the bench a little bit. But what is he really doing? And here's my theory. I think the soccer season is so grueling, Cage. Really don't get time off like the NFL and the NBA. Like, it's a year-round thing. And playing in Spain for Barcelona, every game matters. Every game is tough. You go to PSG, man, you're surrounded by a ton of talent, and you're in the French League. So his legs, his conditioning, his body, I think is going to be in more – it's going to be more rested for the World Cup. Two. Cool? Three. This is his last go-around. So I'm letting you guys know today. I'm putting you guys on notice. And this is my play. I'm looking at messy cards. I'm looking at a variety of messy cards, whether that's 2005 Panini sticker, whether that's 2014 base prism or even the prism silver because that's the first year of prism soccer. Or the card I sent to you today, Cage, which I thought was really interesting. Can you, the card, do you remember the card I sent you? Mm-hmm. Yep. Explain this card because I've never seen anything like it. So, guys, you could you could search this card. It actually has no number. Uh, it's 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 just shockingly cheap, and it's the 2020 tops. It's a messy card. It has no number to it, 
but it's the tops, the lost rookie card. And they actually have a rookie stamp on it as well for Messi. And you have a young Messi on the card. So I haven't bought this one. I bought two PSA 10s from 2014 Prism. I'm going to be buying more Messi cards as we head into, you know, spring and summer. But this card just, it's, it's so cool. It's so interesting. Uh, you're, are you going to go look at the card right now? I could pull it up on my screen if you want as well. Uh, talk to go me ahead, about pull it. Pull it up on the screen. Pull it up on the, the screen. PSA 9 is a $57 card, a $62 card. And what's interesting about this card as well is, at least according to Alt, I'm pulling it up right now, it's it's not numbered, but Alt has this out of 6,916. You see right here, Cage, so I pulled it up on my screen. I've never seen this card before, so we're doing this kind of live on the air. 2020 tops, the lost rookie cards. You have the rookie stamp here. You got this card right here on the back. The FC Barcelona, young Sterling Messi is a right winger. Out of 69-16, but yet 32 PSA PSA 9s, only 50 Can I see it again? Up. Can I see it again? Sure. The front of it? Okay. <clears throat> so I think what you're dealing with and why it's out of 69-69 is, you know how we did the, um, you know how we did the play of um, the F1 card that had Max Verstappen and um, Lewis Hamilton? Yes. You know how I do the Mason Greenwood tops now rookie? This is a version of that Tops Now. Um, I think it's on uk.tops.com. And it's one of those. It's called the Lost Rookie Cards. Classic rookie cards that never got made until now. Celebrating the debut season in the UEFA Champions League. The biggest stars in world football. A new rookie card released every two weeks on a vintage Tops design from the same season as when the player debuted in the competition. And it had parallels to 1, to 5, to 10, to 25, and to 49. And they, they will print them out, inserted, right? That they randomly inserted if you buy them, exactly. So, so print runs revealed afterwards, and the print run on this was six thousand nine hundred and sixteen. Was made in twenty twenty, so that's why it's out of sixty nine sixteen. Although it's not numbered, there are red ones, purple ones. You know, looks like a gold one. You can guys can find this card with the details on it in uk.tops.com forward slash the lost rookie cards. There's a Ronaldo one also. If you're more into Ronaldo. Um, but yes, sixty nine sixteen is not a huge amount. I'm sure as far as graded, there's probably not a ton of them either. Um, Ronaldo had sixty nine sixty one, very close, about forty five more. Wow! I, I I hope we meet both of them one day and, and get to point that out to them, see what they have to say. This is how many cards <laughs> you sold in the first twenty four hours. But as we're doing this, and this is why, guys, I you know we've been getting amazing feedback on the show, and, and thank you. You know we try hard, we bring it every single day. Uh, we really do care about providing value and we try to do as much research as we can. But I also think some of the value is this discord discussion. So I didn't know that was a tops now card. And I imagine that came out pretty recently. Do you think part of the reason that there's not more graded cards is since this card has been, you know, has come out and been shipped out by the time people have received this card value sub for PSA has been gone. So it doesn't, it wasn't feasible to kind of grade this card. So you see 6916 in the population, but I'm only seeing 52, 32 PSA 9s. And I don't imagine that pop to grow anytime soon until PSA reopens the value sub. So let's say PSA reopens the value sub in March or June. No way you're getting this card back before the World Cup on a value sub. Is there am I on to something? Why are there not more of this card graded? People don't grade tops now unless they're me with uh, Mason Greenwood. How many tens? Alt doesn't show any here. I'm gonna go to the. I'm gonna There's go definitely to the tens. There's definitely tens. I see a ten on eBay right now for two ninety nine. Buy it now. Two ninety nine or buy it now. Two ninety nine. Buy it now. I mean, I, I just, I just, I'm on Google, so I'd have to click over into eBay on, to get this. So, but yeah, so two ninety nine. Buy it now. And this person has ten available. You want to go into the PSA website and see what the pop is? Yeah. By the way, I think this is helpful, guys, just to kind of go through this, right? Um, but it's going to be in 2020 tops. You want me to uh, pull up PSA? So I'll, do, I'll do, pull up the PSA pop. Um, and we'll what go in. Search? It's You would go into pop report and go to 2020 tops. Okay. Uh, beep, 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 pop report. Let's do 2020 tops. Come on, yeah. 2020 okay. tops. And let's say messy lost. 
and see what we get. And the first thing that comes up is 2020 Tops The Lost Rookie Cards. You click that, and we have Messi. There are 105 tens and 32 nines. See it? Very low pop, now. Yeah, 105. Only 140 graded out of 6,000 and change. Definitely. And this is 2020, so I'm surprised that you're not seeing more of these these graded because, I mean, this this is a no-brainer to throw into a bulk sub for 8 bucks. Yeah, bucks. I mean, I'm. I, listen, most people didn't know. I'm, I didn't know about this. Otherwise, I probably would have bought a bunch of them. You know, I did with the Mason Greenwood. Um. You know, there haven't been a lot of 10 sales. Um, looks like, you know, last nine sold for like $57. Yep. So not, you know, I like it. I like it because I think it's really cool. It is a cool play on uh, on a quote-unquote messy rookie kind of card. You know, it's got an old style, you know, look to it. Um, you know it's messy limited. card with a rookie stamp. You know it's now, limited. I don't know how much that matters because it's not a true rookie, but I mean it's sneaky. It's a sneaky rookie, but it's the lost rookies. I mean, if you buy it in a slab, it's gonna say the lost rookie cards right on top of it, so people will know. You know, it's almost like um, I mean, it really just depends on you know how you like this, but um in 1996, Fleer put out a decade of excellence card. And it's a throwback to Jordan ten years later. And it's the same card. Um Originally, people were like, oh, why would I want that? Now, it sells for pretty good money because people are not able to spend the, the money for a real Jordan. It's the next best thing. So, yeah, I mean, you know, with, with messy rookie cards going for, you know, six figures, you know. In a, in a down market. In a down market. Yeah. Like, I think this, uh, it's interesting that I like doesn't, it. doesn't do patch autos, huh? Because th th that's something that could, br you know, break a million dollars if you had kind of like an exquisite looking uh, Messi or Ronaldo card from 2000. Remember, there, 2004, 2003 was the same year as LeBron. You had Ronaldo and Messi as, in their rookie seasons. I mean, there are RPAs now, but obviously they weren't doing them back then. Yep. But, you know, they've had them for the last couple of years. I know you can get a Polishich. From sixteen, seventeen, he's got them and and select. He's got a, he's got a couple of them. I know. Um, I've seen a couple of those, um, and obviously in the last couple of years, you've seen plenty of them. Impeccable has them. Tops has it in their Tops Museum collection. Um, you know, Chronicles. I saw a cool Mason Mount. You know, one of those like uh, the crown ones. So they're definitely doing them now. But yeah, back then weren't weren't a lot. weren't a lot of uh, of what you'd call, you know, RPAs. <laughs> there are some cool throwbacks, though. I saw a cool um, Goodwin Champions did, like, a fake exquisite from 2020 with Alex Morgan. So it looks like the LeBron, you know, like the exquisite design from 2003 with, like, Alex Morgan, and it's pretty cool. You I, know, think they, they, wearing, I think she's wearing, like, a blue shirt, but not, like, a jersey, right? right? Yes, exactly. Yep. She's wearing, like, a, it's, like, a blue and white, like, probably a warm-up. Which, by the way, you know how like um, women's sports, they talk a lot about um, equal pay and all that stuff, especially women to men in soccer, because the women's team is a lot better than the men's team. I, I would love to see women uh, get a, a share of using their name and, and, and likelihood and likeness, I apologize, for cards, right? Like it would be cool to have a USA jersey on that card and upper deck to kick uh, USA, the soccer team, the women's soccer team in this case back some profits like i think that kind of interest that would be an interesting way uh to subsidize that income because i think people buy it i, I really do yeah i uh, listen i agree with that i i think it's i mean you know i i think that you were seeing a lot of crazy stuff i saw um ravel posted the georgia guys they said uh remember i talked yesterday about how the georgia quarterback stetson um, he was going to be the mailman. He was going to, you know, be a difference maker in the game, and obviously he was, and how, you know, uh, he came in, he wasn't even the starter on game one, and he came in and replaced the starter, who was JT Daniels. And Ravel tweeted that for all of their, you know, NIL stuff, you know, all the money that's being done now with the college guys, 
So JT Daniels allegedly had a seven-figure card deal, and he wound up just playing half of a game and then being replaced. And all all Stetson got was an NFT deal. You know, with who? It, you uh, I didn't. You I didn't launch do, your own NFT. I didn't do you know any kind of digging into it or what the story was, but it was just a pretty funny thing, right? But Can I, I mean, <laughs> dude. You, so so first off. You've been battling some elements. Dude, you show up, and not only do you show up, you got – Georgia called it. Yeah. Honestly, Georgia on the alternate line, I believe alternate you line. mentioned it. Yeah. I mean, it gets it gets there. It doesn't matter how you get there. It gets there. So, dude, you've been spot on on your calls. You've been spot on this weekend with your NFL plays. Uh, really got to give you a shout because – and, you know, a lot of people profit off your card plays too, but, like, that takes time. So sometimes you don't get, you know, that, that that's why we love betting, right? Like as much yeah. as we like the money, we love being right. You gotta be right. And you want to, it's quick. It's yeah. Quick. With it's sports automatic. cards, it sometimes takes time. Uh, dude, you've been, you've been on your game. So I'm, I'm excited for a whatnot show this weekend. We might have Let's to continue. Play. Let's continue being on our game, but it's going to take some time on this one, but not that much time. Okay. <sighs> so. Andrew's are, playing are one water right now. Looking forward to soccer. Messi's playing now, and Messi's going to be playing the World Cup. Foot, football, the beautiful yeah. game. Thank you. Maybe football. Football. Wildcats. Football. Wildcats. Football. No. That was a movie you need to watch. Villanova Wildcats. They were not they about won division. They won. They're like in like no. double A Central, like the Central High School Wildcats. Nice. Central High School. I, I watch Friday Night Lights or nothing. This is better. No, what do you mean? Better Imagine show, Friday Night Lights with Wesley Snipes. With um what the hell is the kid's name? White men can't jump. Woody Harrelson, Wesley Snipes, together as kids, way before White Men Can't Jump in this movie together, coached by, oh man, I'm going to forget, and Goldie Hawn is their coach. Their high school football team, Central High. They're in the championships yeah, against Prescott. Like I watch this movie, you'll love it. You'll love it. You will love it, I promise. So, anyway. Um, Guys, you've seen Wildcats out there. You got to you know, give Andrew, give Andrew a shout out. Tell him he's got to watch the movie. Um, so this one's a little bit of a different play, right? And it is, it is, guys, there are a few things. If you're patient and have the bankroll and a willingness to do it, there are a few things in what we do that I would consider pretty close to can't miss moneymakers. Oh, no. You don't get these that often, right? It's not the over in tonight's Golden State against Memphis game, which was probably pretty close to a... Uh, an easy over anyway. Um, both teams will score well over 100. Um, but this one's easier. What's everybody looking forward to this weekend? NFL playoffs. NFL playoffs. The playoffs. And then next weekend, the playoffs again. And then next weekend after that, the playoffs again. Maybe. Then you get the Super Bowl. I mean, the Super Bowl's over. People can focus on basketball. People focus on basketball, basketball, and then baseball. People will start reporting. The Thursday, I think, the, the labor union and, and the league, they're going to talk. I'm sure the work should stoppage will, will get cleared up. It'll be baseball. And during that time, because he's not in the playoffs and because he doesn't play baseball and because he doesn't play um, um, basketball, and because he just got eliminated from the from the football season and, and they got knocked out of the playoffs in the last possible moment, no one's going to be looking for Justin Herbert cards. No, and you guys not. know I am not the biggest fan of Justin Herbert. You know I'm not. Okay, you know I've said all along that if you buy Herbert cards, you're going to be in for a problem. Just because long term, I don't think he's the greatest player ever, and I'm sticking to that 100. percent I don't think long term. Herbert's cards, the prices for them are justified right now. But, but, and here's the big but. Because he was eliminated, there are people who have his cards. And I'm not talking about the guys who have the low numbered national treasures and the flawless and the impeccable and the, the huge RPAs and the prism golds. 
I'm talking about the guys who have the prism base, the prism silver. You don't have to go any further than that. Let's talk about prism base, prism silver. <clears throat> I'm talking about the guys with the prism base who were $450, $500, you know, as the season progressed, who were even more than that before the season started and are now listing for, you know, 360 or best offer on eBay. You don't believe them, man? 379 or best offer. And wait for it. It will come down. Go ahead. So what, what kind of pricing you got there on the PSA 10? Yeah, look at look what's that price at? Well, I, I had a feeling you were going here, so I had this queued up. I hope I hope you give me some credit as like. Oh, a, thank a you. Co-host. What's it? What's the top on that? So the top on that one eight. So January eighth. Well, today's the eleventh. Is five hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. People were buying them, expecting that there was no way that going into the week as the sixth seed, they would not at least stay there. Not fall to the seventh, not fall to out of the playoffs, right? October twin third, six hundred and five dollars. Now that's the more important number, right? So, but think about this: October twenty third, six and change, right? So, the, in the beginning of the season, six and change. Okay, now the beginning of the weekend, how much? Five and change, right? If you go on eBay right now, there are listings for three seventy nine or best offer. That's available. Yeah. Right now, as we look, three seven on the best offer, and guess what? It's going to get cheaper. Yep. People want to get out. People were holding. People were hoping that he was going to make a run in the playoffs. Foreman Mills liquidation sale. Over the next couple of weeks, you'll be able to buy those cards for literally. Oh, you're almost there. Half of what they were in October. And here's what you're going to do with those. You're going to buy them at three three twenty five ish, and you're going to hang on to them. You're going to hang on to them, and you're going to be patient. You buy them January. You buy them February. You buy them now. And you hold it for six months, maybe not even six months, maybe five months, when the preseason football starts, when the talk starts football, and that that cycle starts sooner, right? But you know, it used to be like August, maybe by July you see the prices start to go up, but by August, September, right before the season, you don't even have to hold this and watch the dude play again, okay? You'll be able to. It doesn't have to go to six, doesn't have to go to five. You're buying it at three, sell it at four fifty. You just made fifty percent on your money. As many of these as you buy, 50% on your money for a six-month hold. What I want you to do after you buy that, or when you're thinking, cage is nuts, why would I waste my money on that? Go to your bank. Walk into your bank and say, hey, I want to give you money today. And in August, I want you to give me 50% interest on it. And let me know what they tell you. You probably wind up getting arrested. They're saying you don't wear a mask and we actually, as banks don't work anymore. Please yeah. put your money into crypto and do online banking. Like I said, you, you better stake that. You better stake your looks token if you want that kind of money. That's there what they're going to tell you, right? That's what they're going to tell you. I, I, th- I lobbed the pitch up and he just knocks it right out of the park. That's it, man. So, but, but guys, listen. Were you This lefty? is one of those. Hmm? Are you a lefty? No, I'm a righty. Why? Yeah, I just wanted to know. Lefties are weird. They're good. <laughs> Sure sorry, to sorry to all the lefties. I just, I just said. I don't know why I said that. Dude, but they I'm get not a shorter a distance run to first base. Each row was like at first base before. Lefties, you lefties are best pitchers. The lefty pitchers are the best. I mean, you know. Anyway, so, listen. Greg Maddox, point, seventy-six pitch complete game. Listen, Maddox. That? People don't realize how good Greg Maddox was, especially because he came up in the late '80s and pitched all through the '90s. Not only did he pitch that well, he pitched that well against steroid monsters. And no the corners. No, yeah, man. Yeah, no, no question about him when it came to like steroid use, nothing as a pitcher. Never in doubt, never any kind of haziness there. Won 300 and something games. I mean, just uh, just a uh, uh, really underrated pitcher as far as you know the world. Especially 76 pitch complete game. 76 pitch complete game. That's less than nine pitches per inning, Cage. Well, you're doing good math. Uh, dude, I was amazing at uh, times tables. Like, like almost borderline incredible. They they wanted to send me to special schools. Well, That's that scary. part does not surprise me. Wanting to send you to a special school does I know not I hijacked your Herbert me. play, but dude, I mean, our audience is a sophisticated and tired <laughs> Excuse me. We... You have a high-profile prospect that has a g- career amazing season. You can't knock Herbert's statistical season. That gets knocked out. People liquidation sale. 
it's the same thing going to happen with Soto, Tatis, and Acuna mm-hmm. in their first year um, coming in, coming up, right? Right after that first season when they sold off, it, it, it's 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 a sh- it's as sure of a play as it gets, unless the guy tears his ACL in the off season. You know what I mean? Uh, you don't he doesn't have to step on the field. <laughs> Am I hijacking your play? No. No, I was just going back. 66 strikes, 13 balls. It wasn't a no-hitter or a perfect game, actually. Um, he actually gave up a run. Um, but, yeah, pretty masterful 76-game performance. So so what I'm going to say to you is the Herbert play, it's just basically common sense. This is you know leading the fish to water, like you like to say, man, and it really is. Look for these plays. Who else? I mean, Herbert, to me, stands out amazing because – of the shock that people have that he, that he didn't make the playoffs, right? So people, as recently as de- a couple of days ago, it took three, four days ago, this was a five and change $100 card. That means it's already down 40% from where it was last week to this week. That has to be an overreaction. And you understand, that's great. People want to liquidate, they want to be out, but he didn't break his leg, right? He, he didn't tear his ACL, right? His team lost. And there will be hype for him coming into next season. They'll the Chargers now will get a decent draft pick. Maybe they'll get a, a, a lineman for him. Maybe it'll be a running back. Who the heck knows? And there'll be some there'll be a lot of talk about what they're doing with Herbert to bring him to the next level. P.S. guys, we talk about the AFC quarterbacks all the time, right? And how there can only be one each year that wins. Two two points on that. One, Andrew makes a great point. You know, it that doesn't matter if you're buying now. And you're selling before the season even starts because no one even gives it a chance. But two, here you go. Only two can make the Pro Bowl. And he was one of them. Not Josh Allen, not Joe Burrow, not Lamar Jackson, not Derek Carr. Was Mahomes and Herbert. So he had a great year. He had a great statistical year. And, um, you know, so to me... This is the, uh, you know, this is an easy, easy play. Who else? Who, who, who else might have been knocked out of the playoffs? That's a young, a young name that you can look at that might, you know, be on a little bit of a downswing, um, you know, that, that you can look at also if people aren't, aren't Herbert buyers. Christian McCaffrey seems like a buy. And I know he wasn't knocked out of the playoffs, but that guy might as well have been. I mean, he's, he's a stud year in and year out. Um, and he does get injured a lot, but one in the in the uptick to the season, he's a good buy. But I also think he's someone you could hold for game one or game two, where he has an incredible game. The truth that I'm thinking of, if you like investing in non quarterbacks, which is difficult in football, are Justin Jefferson, great year, but more importantly, because of the same shock, Jonathan Taylor, because people were also holding his cards, waiting for his week one explosion. Into you know into playoff glory and rushing the two hundred yards and they were knocked the hell out. Right? Dare I go there? I'm gonna look this up. Dare I go there? I think the hate for Carson Wentz this week is shocking because the guy had a really good season. Yeah, they didn't show up against the Jaguars, but that's a complete game. Like that's a whole team effort. Wentz didn't throw the interceptions. I think till the third quarter actually of that game. So, dude, you know how much pause I'm giving you right now. You could see my face. I'm not a Wentz guy, but typically there's when there's such an overreaction, there's some buying opportunities. He had a good year, man. You, you can't Proofs not- in the pudding, man. The Eagles carried his $33 million salary hit. The Colts got Wentz. The Eagles are in the playoffs. The Colts aren't. He didn't have a bad year. That's all I'm saying. Listen. Frank Reich wouldn't even commit to him being the quarterback this year coming up. Dude, you, you have no – I guarantee you're not going to guess his stats this season. I probably won't. Okay. okay. So you don't want to? No. I mean, you want me to – I mean, let's see. He probably had 3,300 yards passing. Okay. 28 touchdowns and nine interceptions. Really close. So, but, but let me just pause right I there. I swear I wasn't looking. I just pulled those numbers out I of the top you. of my head. You don't even have a computer. You can't afford it. Um, <laughs> no, I have a computer. But I didn't use it. Look, it's blank. See? I wasn't looking at anything up. I promise. Yeah, that's a PC. We're talking about a real computer, like a Macintosh or an Apple, one of those. <laughs> uh, 
if, if you gave me those stats, is that a good season? Probably. I mean, it's it's good it's good quarterback efficiency, but in today's game, in an eighteen game season, basically what it is is a touchdown and a half, and you know, two hundred yards passing. It's not great at all. I mean, it's probably an average quarterback. He didn't make a lot of mistakes, but he didn't do much to to you know to elevate the team. I mean, basically, what I would tell you to do is I would tell you to like rank the QBs, right? Rank the QBR, see where he falls in the QBR, see where he falls in quarterback ranking, see where he yeah. falls in the total yards, the Kirk total pass. Had a better season than him. He sucks in QBR. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. I, you know. On the surface, that looks like a good season, but you're right. Let's dig a little it deeper. It depends what you're looking for, man. I mean, if you're looking for somebody to not make the plays, look at somebody to just not make the mistakes and, and be a a you know a, a game plan manager, he's fine. But obviously, when they need to make plays, you know, Jonathan Taylor can't throw the ball down the field. <laughs> and I guess Carson Wentz can't either. So that's part of the problem, right? I mean, that's, that's the deal, right? Uh that defense didn't st- didn't show up either versus the Jags. You gotta you gotta say something. Back. I agree. That was a huge huge upset. It was a huge upset. Um, and you huge. Know, am I Wentz guy, Cage? Yeah. No, yeah. we're on. No, you are not a no, Wentz guy. Why are you doing that? You're a Nikki I'm gonna, Foles get, guy. I'm gonna hate, hate mail. I'm not a Wentz guy. Well, you clearly are a Wentz guy now. You've been trying to defend him, even though he had a crappy season. <laughs> You're telling me how great his yeah, season is. <laughs> Oh man, listen. The thing is, in the NFL, there are there are elite QBs who can go out there and win for you, right? And there's a level below, and then there's a level below that. Now let's look at the teams that are in the playoffs right now, right? There are 14 this year, so it's it, it's it's pretty straightforward, pretty easy, right? So you have let's just talk about talk about the AFC if you like. Okay, you're gonna you're pulling it up, or you're just showing me me twice. I don't know what you're doing there. You're doing put cost and wins cards. Oh my god, people don't buy cost and wins. I'm just saying it fits. It fits your narrative, right? He's not as as highly touted a prospect as um, Herbert, but dude, at his high, his cards are 260 on uh, October 19th. It's true. But here's the thing, man. Now they're a hundred dollars. Here's the thing with Herbert. There's going to be excitement coming into the season because he is the guy. He's young. He's got a lot ahead of him. On on Wentz, I understand why it's down because they asked Frank Reich today if he would commit to Wentz as his quarterback in 2022, and they said he said I'm not answering any questions about that. So he the coach wouldn't even say that that guy's going to be quarterback next year. So to me, no, it's not the same narrative. No one's going to be wow in August running to buy their Carson Wentz cards. That's true. Now, That's true. don't get me wrong, they could if if he comes out and has a great. Um, you know, preseason and Frank Frank Reich is like, this is my guy. We fixed all the problems. He's going to have a great year. Then sure, hundred bucks is cheap for that card. But the 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 point here is not just the bargain, not just that it's come down. It's that you know people are going to get up for Herbert again, and That's it. you're right, even artificially, because there are so many Herbert bags out there. People got to pump those bags. So you just might as well get a small bag for yourself and let your bags be pumped up by all the people holding hundreds of thousands of dollars in Herbert cards. Can you so say baggy, you know, man? Baggy, baggy, bag, bag. All right. Baggy, 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 baggy. No, so listen okay. to the QBs, right? So AFC, right? Mahomes, right? Help me out. It will help me out, right? So right. Mahomes, I mean, Mac Jones, whatever, right? Mahomes, Mac, Josh Allen. um, David Carr. Well, Derek Carr, Joe Burrow. All right. Ben Roethlisberger. Jimmy G. Uh, Ryan, T- that's, the, that's the NFC. Ryan Tannehill on the A- on the NFC, you got Rodgers, you got Brady, you got uh, Stafford, Jimmy G. Um, basically, what you what you're dealing with here Kyler. is it's all of the Kyler Murray. All of those guys are yeah. in that top tier, the top tier, or the tier right below it, or or that that third small. So I'm going to tell you like like Brady. Rogers, Mahomes, top tier guys, right? Kyler, maybe next. Next is Kyler. It's you know all of these other guys who are in there. Just below that, you got your Tannehill, who's a little better than people give him credit for. Carr, um, Dak Prescott. You wouldn't put so you put every quarterback made the playoffs is in those those levels. Carson Wentz is not there, and that's part of the reason they didn't make the playoffs. You know that football is very easy. 
right? It's very hard to make the NFL playoffs without a good quarterback. Fine. Right? And if you, and if, if you want to talk about the worst quarterbacks who are there, the worst quarterbacks who are there, look at the AFC. It's Tannehill. It's Derek Carr. They had great, great defenses. Look so what the Raiders cool. defensive line did. That took them. To, yeah, but not this week. And the Colts has a the Colts had a good defense and they played well and they had a good running game. But even with that, Wentz wasn't good enough to to get him there. I I, I don't understand how you're not going to say that there's not that he like you have you have um, Debo Samuel. Just, you, you can't put you, Wentz in the same category as as either Carr a, or Tannehill. What about his Garoppolo? You know, if if Wentz was back in the NFC. Maybe, but no. I think Garoppolo is. I think Garoppolo. The, Garoppolo has better weapons. Better weapons on offense to throw to. Significantly better weapons on offense to throw that's to. That's what I'm trying to I say. I mean, yeah, but still, that's. Not, I mean, that's going to fix that all in one year. Garoppolo's got Debo. He's got Kittle. By the way, tight end. I mean, if you're looking to protect a QB, tight ends is the way to go in this NFL right now. Um, Mac Jones had a great season because they got two good tight ends. You know, Lamar Jackson looks better than he really is because because he got Andrews over there. You know, Mahomes got Kelsey. I mean, Carr has Waller, right? You know, obviously Gronk has been a security blanket for for you know for Brady forever. You know, all these guys that you know that you look what those numbers are. Boom, boom, boom. It's all about the the, the tight end. So I don't know if you're a Jet fan. Hope they get you a tight end this year. You know, like <laughs> it's one of one of those kind of things. What else you got? What's going on in that? What's going on in that Grizzlies game, dude? I mean, the Grizzlies were up by like 15, 17 points. The Warriors just took the lead, four point lead. They're relentless, man. They're a good team. I'm, I'm, this is going to be one of the games of the year. I predicted a score of one hundred twenty two to one hundred twenty. I don't know who's going to win, but I predicted the score. You want to go watch it? No, nah, man. I mean, yeah, I'll watch it eventually. But as soon as we're done, are we good? Class dismissed. Well, that's it. That's the deal. Class dismissed. Listen, Luca Nation, loving every episode of this. And a special shout out to Gary V today because this is episode 555. Five is his favorite number. So we might as well say hi, Gary V. Episode 555, right? Five is his, his thing, right? A little five. You know, we we miss him in the sports car world. At least I do. He, there was a, seriously, there was a lot of energy in the sports car world. It was a different kind of energy when he was here. Um, I agree. So, so, so I, I made a post, uh, a poll on our Instagram story. A lot of people voted. Two to one kind of is where it broke down. Is, you know, should we welcome – or like uh, how did I word a cage? Do you remember? Like should we bring Gary back into the hobby? Because mm-hmm. right? I think we as like as a community can make people feel welcomed or we, make it, we can make them feel ostracized or we can make them feel bullied. And I think he felt that, you know, the hobby was pushing him out. Maybe not, maybe yes. I saw a clip about it. I can't find the clip. Who cares? <laughs> Who cares? No, I, I swear to God, I saw it. I wouldn't make it up. What, what, what do I stand to gain? But I do think as a hobby, we, we should welcome those guys, those types of guys back. Um, there was energy. It's, it's it brings energy. a lot of people with them, you know? I see the negative that comes with it too, guys. So don't, don't, don't think that I'm oblivious to it. I, I have conversations behind the scenes about it. Uh, I think that in these situations, the good outweighs the bad. I tend to agree. I only brought it up because of the fives. I noticed that it was five, five, five. So, dude, well, it's a fun. Shout out to you, man. I know I'd rather do this with you. You're a fucking beast. I sure am. Peace. Thanks to everybody who sends me movie quotes and sends me messages that they understand and get the movies that I'm bringing here. You did your Timmy and Jimmy yesterday. I gave a South Park line. You had no idea. A lot of our listeners knew. <laughs> so now it's not fun. just movies, it's TV shows too. Yeah, well, listen, if you say Timmy and Jimmy, it, I got to do a South Park. Timmy. Timmy. Or is it Timmy? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Love you, Luke Nation. Everybody.